there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin of Cold Open. I really, I suppose, I mean, it's a, it feels like it should be a Cold Open episode, but because this is actually part of the PS Plus deals games, I think these should actually just really sit in the PS freebies section more than anything else. And one of the first games that we're going to look at for this month of January in 2017, this feels so weird to actually immediately say 2017, I was going to say 16 up until the last second. One of the first games we're going to look at of the 2017 batch of PS Plus games is Day of the Tentacle. Now, do you know much about this game? If you don't know much about this game, then you need to go and look up pretty much the history of Double Fine Entertainment. Uh, Day of the Tentacle is a classic that got remastered, re-released on the PS3 and PS4 a fair while ago, and it's actually, it's it's old, it's funny. I wanted to bring it to you guys to show it to you back whenever Shirt Engine came out, but I couldn't bring myself to pay for a a point and click adventure game that I'd already completed maybe half a dozen times whenever I was a kid because that's what it was it was it, this is one of the this is one of those quintessential classics of my childhood so yeah double fine entertainment have actually brought it back I mean it's this full throttle um probably uh, the monkey island game series and a couple of others well flight of the amazon queen was my one of my personal favorites but um these games pretty much were my formative experiences of playing PC games back in the day because I didn't require actually dexterity or a good powerful PC to run them. They just needed something enough that I could actually show those like wonderful VGA graphics. So let's see if they actually, I'm, I'm more than willing to bet they actually have the option to switch back and forth between them here. Let's take a quick look to see the sentence. Yeah, the original art or the classic art. <laughs> yeah, auto, it'll actually switch back and forth between them. Game settings, subtitles on, text and language. In English, voice language in German or English. <laughs> Alright, we'll leave it all as is for those. Uh, controls, basically enough, it shows what they are. Inventory, cancel, walk to, interact. Bam, done, dusted. It's all point and click menu systems just applied to a gamepad, which, I mean, some games have done really well. I mean, Broken uh, not Broken Saints, Broken Sword? Yeah, Broken Sword is absolutely fucking awful! For we're playing on the PA consoles now that they've actually kind of like pushed it from what it was to 3D and then back to kind of like a cheaper looking version of what it used to be. All right, so um, that's a, that, I'm not going to have a, many complaints about the um, the history on the modern versions of uh, point and click games. I mean, Double Fine are one of the few people that actually like pulled off the 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 correct way or the the more traditional but also still entertaining way whenever they did Broken Age, and um, Broken Age wasn't a great game. But it was entertaining enough to actually that I wanted. I enjoyed doing the playthrough. In fact, you can watch the entire playthrough here on Passage of Skin. I put up the entire game in two parts, I think, like a part A, part B, back whenever I ran through it ages back. I mean, I don't even know how much commentary I did in those back in, back in those. I mean, that's like at least a year ago that I made that video. Is that we're actually like almost a year to the time we've gone back around and we're now playing another Double Fine game. Do you think they might have actually like planned that in any way, shape, or form? Hmm. So. Let's take a look. I know I'm going to be fine about the developer's commentary. I mean, if I was playing this for myself, I'd probably do it with the commentary just because it's um it's an old game for me and like I don't even care about hearing the plot. And to be honest, you guys probably don't because you're going to be listening to me instead. Lucas Hart. Uh, with all that Skywalker sound. And the world was beautiful back in the day. And we made it look like shit because of the crap we put into it. It just looks like it's vomiting out. I look like a wizard's hat. I'll drink what I want. Delicious. More aggressive. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Brilliant classic sound effects library. Aww. I grew arms. 
To arms, I say! <laughs> That's convenient! Come, Adventure Club, let's go discover! Okay. Back to the lab. <gasps> the terror. The absolute terror. God. <laughs> Man, it's, it's just like, all oh, this is massive flashbacks for me. While, do you, know, do you know that whole feeling of like rose-tinted glasses whenever you're actually looking at something from a different time period and you're going like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. But I don't remember looking this bad. But this is actually a decent remaster. I mean, the, the vectored the shit out of absolutely every single drawing in this. But um, even then, the animation's not... <laughs> this is less a remaster, this is actually, let's increase the pixel count just. We didn't really kind of like refine or change anything. See, one of the things I notice about adventure games is that they're one of the few game series that you can enforce a credit seat rule at the very, very beginning of the game and make people sit and watch through it because it kind of can be used for intro to the game, intro to the story. You wouldn't even really do this in movies a lot. I mean, sometimes in TV shows, essentially there's like almost like watching a, to a title screen. But we're making, we're seeing a kind of like a, an abundance of that showing back up again in games like uh, World of Final Fantasy, where things are episodic. I mean, Metal Gear Solid really did that. It actually did like the Metal Gear Solid intro and outro to every mission, which uh, seemed to be like a natural cut point whenever you were doing missions as well. I, well, natural cut point for videos, I mean. As I, I only think about the fact that everything I do now in terms of actually doing YouTube videos. <laughs> well, somehow they managed to pick up a car in the way. Stop driving through barns, Bernard. The entire half of that screen, they weren't even actually on the road. Boys hitting jumps, getting good air. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mustachio Edison. <laughs> Spread out commando style. Pantsless. And help them escape. All right, and don't get a test the drum. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Basic controls, highlights, cycle inventory, blah 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 blah. Okay. Snapping to hot spots. Snapping to hot spots. No, snapping to hot spots, snapping to hot spots. First service bell. Ding! Ding! Oh well. Don't go into the scary door. So basically, as why why did he steal that? Just 
just looking at all the different kind of possibilities of what I can do. Well, ain't that sweet. See, I'm actually liking the fact that they bothered to put a snap to on this so you can actually quickly cycle through things. Because, like, searching... Chuck the plant. Ha! <laughs> the, um, main thing about... Come with a dime stuck in it. Huh? So, the, um, the thing about having the quick snap means that you're not searching the room for things that you can pick up. Ugh. I'm trying to remember how you actually... I'll take a look in here. I thought it was actually have to get the dime out of the gum somehow, but okay. Hey, you got a dime? Ta-da! And we've, of course, solved the first puzzle of opening the door. Shirley carried me. Talking with emotion? Is it necessary? If we deadpan this all, it'll come off as a kind of humor. You naive human. <laughs> I still look like a wizard's hat. No. Welcome to the plot of the rest of this game. That wasn't a... That wasn't a click, that was a punch? Milk toast! Ah, good use of a word. Uh-oh! In the past! Why are we going with you? Do we have to go? Sorry, what? They've died! I converted this car and a couple of toilets into a time machine. I'm going to flush you through time. They were all destroyed. Yeah. That's where they conceived me under a large bout of acid.
that might have been tomorrow we saw. I think we're trying to go to the past. <laughs> oh no! That's not a good sign. Gnarly! All right. Can I do it again? Right. Did he just flush himself? No. Oh. It's a bit wet in there, Professor. They're just so expensive. Unofficially expensive, but still expensive. All right. Let's make sure you know all the things you need to go and find! Oh, right! So we don't have to go on an adventure anywhere? No, step one, make a plan. Step four, profit. Okie dokie. So where am I going to search now? Okay, nothing here. Let's go over there. <laughs> Upstairs! <laughs> I'm from a different timeline! The shit that you made while you were in the toilet makes contain some chrono particles. We managed to send it back! Now, all right, I got some paper in the pooter. Bring over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Yes, God, toilet doctor person. Great, great! My one... Whatever you say... Okay... I'm just your...
All right. Okay. Um, where do I go now? I think I need to go somewhere. Maybe I get something from the tree. I don't want to have to climb. Uh, why do I have to go so far? Maybe if I just go that way, I can just wander on. Uh, okay, so we're heading to the end now. Um, the pace of these games tend to be pretty... <laughs> look at it. Pretty damn slow. You get the basic idea of the way it works with, um basic sense of humor that's actually a, it's a bit older now the voice acting in it is intent is either terabad intentionally or just that kind of like early days of early days of just terabad it's kind of like it's intentionally entertaining while also being intentionally a, just obtusely I'm trying to think of the right way to describe it like, do you remember old video games? Do you remember old video games had voice acting in them? And they... It seemed like there was literally, literally no effort put into voicing them. But this definitely had, it had some of its ass involved. It actually was like, there was effort put in, in the voice acting. But it's uh, to actually play it very deadpan. Ha <laughs> wandering searching for this guy. So oh there's John Hancock and Thomas Jefferson. I want the fire. So the pace of this is going to be glacially slow. Um, you've got the basic idea of what Day of the Tentacle is like. You've got to see what the intro to the plot is. You would solve a series of puzzles by essentially helping people get the things that they want to the places they want, rubbing object A against object B to solve puzzle C. And along the way, you get a little bit of humor that will help you take down this guy. I, I don't. I don't think I have anything else to really say. I mean, my just being being a bit of a sarcastic prick about the character voices and stuff for the first three bit was just as much as I could probably manage and handle in a single quick playthrough of this. The first half hour of this game is just kind of like cutscene is in a lot of ways. So um, if you want to go and give it a try and check it out for yourself, it is free in the PlayStation Plus store or the PlayStation Plus deal for this month. Day of the Tentacle is. I, I think I may have undersold the hell out of it in this gameplay. It is entertaining. It is a narrative plot. It was not a 20 to 30 hour game by any stretch of imagination. You'll probably burn through this in a single night if you've got a one big long session and did. And if you go and grab a guide from online, you can get through the game really, really quickly. The only other thing that's there is that if you don't you do that and run through the game as fast as you can. You don't get all the little extra jokes and a little bit of side comedy that goes along with it. But there is no side plots. There's no side quests. There's just a linear narrative tale that's there to be played. This is the walking simulator of its era. Kids, this is what we used to play whenever we wanted to play through uh, a Gone Home or a Firewatch Give it a try. See what you think of it. This is a good, good modern inter modern remaster of it to make it uh, palatable to the eyes. You should definitely check out what it looks like in the original. It's really pixely and awful in a lot of ways, but it's it, it, uh, Double Fine defined this genre for so long with a couple of its games, and it's the reason why a lot of us were excited whenever Broken Age was announced and whenever it was going to be coming out. So Tim Schafer, it's a good old game. I'm glad it's actually been brought back for another generation to see, but um, it is a relic of the past. 
So guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been the first episode of a PlayStation Plus look back or free look at the freebies for the month of January 2017. There will be a lot more coming up very soon. There's a couple of really good games this month. And uh, we are going to extend what's going to be done for PS Plus because I'm going to be doing the PS Plus library of games for the Hong Kong account or Hong Kong store as well. Which um, tend to be a little bit different. So you'll get to see some weird, interesting games that are available in the Hong Kong PlayStation Plus. And I might try and encourage you to actually go and sign up for it because it is the cheapest of the PlayStation Pluses per year. And it's easy enough to actually get yourself a code for um, putting into the Hong Kong store or putting uh, buying specifically the membership via play, playasia.com. And you can grab a link for PlayAsia for a discount and to essentially yeah, I can make a commission from any, any sales that are made through that link in the details below. If you like that, feel free to click on it and um, help out the channel. And I hope to see all you dudes in another video. Remember as well, there's a subscribe button sitting right up there. Hit that if you like what you saw and you like my voices and everything else I was doing. And uh, of course over here, there's all the videos of stuff that have actually been done fairly recently on the channel that you can check out as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.